The Chicago Blackhawks are all set to head out west for their upcoming four-game road trip. I'll discuss everything that took place at practice this morning ahead of the team's flight out to Seattle. I'll also talk about Jared Nightingale being the latest addition to the Rockford IceHogs coaching staff, as well as Marion Hosa and Doug Wilson finally getting inducted to the Hockey Hall of Fame, all right here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast. Locked On Blackhawks, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Blackhawks podcast, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Today is Tuesday, November 16th. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman2, or you could also check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And if you like what you're hearing today, then please be sure to go and follow the podcast. You can also go and leave me a review if you want to as well. It's all for free wherever you may listen to your podcast, whether that be through Apple Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, Google Podcast, etc. If you go and follow the show right now, then you'll be able to get the latest episode as soon as it comes out each day. And if you haven't yet, be sure to go and check out the video edition of this episode on YouTube. I just started up on YouTube earlier last week, folks. So if you could please go and check out this video if you aren't already watching here, uh, go and throw the video a like and please, please, please subscribe to the Locked On Blackhawks YouTube page. It'll only take a couple of seconds, folks, and it'll help me out tremendously. So again, if you're not doing so already, please go and like this video and also go and show some support by subscribing to Locked On Blackhawks on YouTube. All right, getting into the show now today. First off, as always, thank you for tuning into today's episode of Locked On Blackhawks and for making the show your first listen here to start your day, whether you're listening to this on Tuesday afternoon as it's just dropping right now. I just got home from practice not that long ago, or if you're tuning into this on Wednesday morning, thanks for making Locked On Blackhawks your first listen. And to start the things off today, um, before I get into... The latest news out of practice this morning ahead of the team flying out west for their upcoming four-game road trip. I wanted to open things up, open things up by saying uh, just how nice it was yesterday to see both Doug Wilson and Marion Hosa finally inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. This was something that was supposed to happen, I think, over a year ago now, actually. I think I, I remember hearing about this news last summer. Yeah, it, it's been a while, but obviously due to COVID-19, uh, things got postponed a little bit. But none of that matters now because officially both Doug Wilson and Marion Hosa are in the hall. Congratulations to both those two. Um, and as I just said, I actually remember, I think it was had to have been one of my first episodes since I uh, taking over as the host where the Blackhawks or the NHL announced that Doug Wilson and Marion Hosa were going to be in the same Hall of Fame class. So it's nice to see that finally those two are officially in. Uh, and for Wilson, it's been a long time coming. This was Doug Wilson's 24th year of eligibility for the Hall of Fame. And a lot of people have been uh, outspoken and have been trying to voice their opinions to get Wilson into the Hall. And, and if I'm, finally, it seems like all their efforts uh, have been worth it and, and worked out. Um, and when you go and look at some of the numbers, I'm going to pull them up here real quick. When you go and look at some of the numbers that Wilson put up in his playing career, I mean, it's kind of head scratching to, to think how it took so long for this guy to get into the hall of fame. Um, I honestly have no answers for it. Uh, Doug Wilson ranks 12th in NHL history with 237 goals, these are by defensemen, might I add. He's not 12th in NHL history in goals. 12th in NHL history in goals from a defenseman. He's also 15th in points with 590. And 18th in assists with, uh, that number's not right either, but he's, he's 15th in points, 18th all-time in assists, and 12th in goals. I mean, inside the top 20 in three major categories there out of all defensemen in the history of this game. So, 
you, you would have thought that it wouldn't have taken 24 freaking years for this guy to get in the Hall of Fame, right? Um, but as I said earlier, not, none of that matters anymore. Doug Wilson is officially a Hall of Famer. And during his speech, it was really cool to hear him share some stories of his day uh, in his day back with the Blackhawks, talking about guys like Keith Magnuson and Stan Makita, who was his first roommate in the NHL, uh, and also Tony Esposito, j- just some legendary members from the Blackhawks back in the day. Uh, so it was pretty cool to hear those stories and uh, also to hear Wilson kind of give credit to those guys and more for having a huge influence on his professional career and also just on life in general as a man. Uh, he said a lot of good things and um, he said he got a ton of just very crucial advice throughout his time with the Blackhawks. So uh, that was pretty cool to hear here as well that Wilson got to share that. So um, also, I don't want to forget that Doug Wilson was a Norris trophy winner back in 1982. Don't want to live, leave that out with all the accolades that I just mentioned. And he was also uh, a finalist. He finished in the top five for Norris trophy voting on four other separate occasions. So he was a a regular during the 1980s in the conversation for the best defenseman in the entire league. He was also an eight time all-star. So regularly represented on the national stage, but sadly never got to win a Stanley cup. He spent 14 of his 16 years in the NHL with the Blackhawks. Obviously, they didn't win any Stanley Cups during that era. Uh, He's also, for what it's worth, Doug Wilson's also the franchise leader in both goals and points by a defenseman. So even though he didn't win a Stanley Cup, 14 tremendous years with the Blackhawks. And the other two that he played in the NHL were with uh, the San Jose Sharks in their inaugural years in the NHL. Doug Wilson was actually the first captain in San Jose Sharks history and now obviously serves as their general manager. So one more time, congratulations to Doug Wilson, overtime and overdue. Uh, But finally, he can say that he's an official member of the Hockey Hall of Fame. The wait wasn't nearly as long for Marion Hosa as he got the nod, uh, the call, I should say, into the Hall of Fame during his first year of eligibility, but there's a good reason for that. I mean, Marion Hosa, the guy just embodied winning everywhere he went. The team had success. Three-time Stanley Cup champion, and I think it was seven years, maybe eight years as a member of the Blackhawks. Uh, and, and even prior to that, back-to-back finals appearances with the Pittsburgh, Pengu- Pittsburgh Penguins and the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, And he was an absolute force on both ends of the ice for for basically as long as he played, not only for those cup teams, but I mean, Marion Hossa is going to go down as one of the best two way forwards in NHL history. Um, And, you know, you've kind of heard Patrick Kane and some other Blackhawks players in the past say that it's, it's no surprise that things started to head in the wrong direction for the franchise as soon as Big Hoss retired. I mean, that's the kind of impact that he had on the game night in and night out. Going through some of the accolades here for Hossa, he finished with 1,134 points in his 1,309 career games, over 500 goals scored for Hossa during his 19-year NHL career, an eight-time 30-goal score. People honestly kind of forget how gifted this dude was offensively in the early part of his career. Uh, And he was also a three-time 40-goal scorer as well. That's not really what people I think are going to remember him for, but during the early stages of his career, Marion Hossa could absolutely light the lamp. Uh, And he had some really big time years with the Ottawa Senators and also with the Atlanta Thrashers before uh, he went on that Stanley Cup final run with Pittsburgh, Detroit, and Chicago. Um, And another thing I think that people forget about with Marion Hossa is during his final year with the Blackhawks in 2016 2017, Hossa tallied. 26 goals in his in his 73 games played, which is actually the third most goal scored that he had in any season here with Chicago. There were just no signs of Big Hoss slowing down. Unfortunately, the skin condition uh, wound up playing its part, and he was forced 
to hang up the skates for good after that season. But I really feel like, I don't know if Hosa would still be playing to this day if he didn't have a skin condition, but there's definitely an argument there that he could still be on this Blackhawks team. I mean, no signs of him slowing down. I know the offensive game wasn't fully what it was, but he could still light the lamp and he was as good defensively as anyone. So I really could see Hosa. I mean, had it not been for that skin condition, he would have continued, I think, to tear it up at the NHL level. Um, and during his speech, one thing I wanted to add as well with Marion Hosa, it was really cool to hear, you know, obviously he gave credit to uh, Rocky Wirtz and Stan Bowman for bringing him to Chicago and for kind of organizing those championship teams. Uh, he, he also thanked, you know, Joel Quenville and the former players that he got to play with here in Chicago. But I thought it was really special and unique for Hosa to uh, give credit and show some respect to the Blackhawks training staff. Guys like Troy Parchman, uh, Mike Gabsky, Paul Goodman, Dr. Michael Terry, who uh, Hosa said basically put him back together was the way that he phrased it and uh, just kind of kept the skin condition at bay for as long as they could. Hosa really said it, it wouldn't have been possible for him to keep playing that long without the Blackhawks training and medical staff. And he also gave a shout out to the late great Clint Reif, who was also a part of that training staff back in those days. Clint, uh, I know Marion said that he's, he's looking down smiling. That was pretty cool that, that Marion touched, touched on uh, all the trainers in the medical staff that affected him in his career. So w one last time, just congratulations to an excellent human being and Marion Hosa and also for Doug Wilson and being the latest Blackhawks to now officially be members of the Hockey Hall of Fame. All right, I think that will finish up everything on Doug Wilson and Marion Hosa getting inducted to the Hall yesterday. Coming up in just a moment, I'll discuss the latest addition to the Rockford Ice Hogs coaching staff. But first, I need to talk to you all about DirecTV Stream. Does this sound familiar? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows, you're watching sports highlights on your phone, and you got your neighbor's best friends log in for all the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment that you love without the hassle. And a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before, so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract, so get rid of the clutter and the confusion, and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more right now at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. All right, welcome back to the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. Getting into segment two now on the show today. Prior to Blackhawks practice this morning, the organization announced that Jared Nightingale is the latest addition to the Rockford Icehawks coaching staff. And with Derek King obviously getting the call up as the interim once Jeremy Colleton was fired a couple weekends ago. That basically left Anders Sorensen kind of all alone down in Rockford by himself. And during a press conference uh, a couple of weeks ago as well, general manager Kyle Davidson stated that his intention fully is to add at least uh, one more coach down to the staff in Rockford as well as one more assistant up at the NHL level with the Blackhawks as well. So this addition, the timing of it really shouldn't come as much of a surprise. There was definitely a need for another body uh, down with Sorensen and the Ice Hogs. And now Jared Nightingale seems to be that guy. And Nightingale, by the way, was a former captain of the Rockford Ice Hogs back in 2013, 2014, the only season that he was actually uh, part of the Blackhawks organization. But if you go and do some homework, on Nightingale. I mean, this was a guy that bounced around basically the entire AHL during his time in professional hockey. Here's the list of AHL teams that Jared Nightingale played for. The Springfield Falcons, the Iowa Stars, the Hartford Wolfpack, the Chicago Wolves, the Connecticut Whale, the Syracuse Con Crunch, the Rockford Icehogs, the Norfolk Admirals, the Grand Rapids Griffins, and 
uh, the Milwaukee Admirals. And those were just all the AHL teams that he played for. Uh, uh, Nightingale also did some jumping around in the ECHL in his playing days too. So this is a guy that has uh, obviously plenty of professional experience with a lot of different coaching staffs. He was also the captain for several, several different clubs. So uh, a leader on and off the ice during his playing days. Uh, he's got experience, obviously, on being being with so many different teams. He's got experience with a lot of different hockey minds. He's played at different levels. Uh, I don't know much about him as a coach right now, but he certainly at least has the background of someone who could be successful in this business. And also, his older brother, Jason, is currently the director of analytics for the Buffalo Sabres, while his younger brother, Adam, is the head coach for the United States national program at their 17U level. So this is definitely a hockey family, to say the least. As for Jared himself, um, became a coach a couple of years back. He started out first as an assistant coach in 2017-18 with the Omaha Lancers of the U.S. Hockey League. And after just one year there, wound up working his way up to becoming an assistant at the United States national level with the U.S. NTDP, where uh, his younger brother, Adam, is the head coach. It probably had something to do with him getting moved up so quickly. Um, so he went from being in the USHL to joining the United States national program, which jumps back and forth between a couple of leagues. And then after just one year with the U.S. NTDP, once again, Nightingale was on his way up and was named an associate coach for the OHL's Saginaw Spirit. And then after just one year in Saginaw, once again, uh, like his playing career, I mean, I guess Nightingale just loves bouncing around different organizations. Uh, he bounced around one last time after being an associate coach with the Saginaw Spirit and was hired this past summer by another OHL club, the Flint Firebirds, as their assistant coach. And now, obviously, he's going to be in that same role for the Rockford Ice Hogs of the AHL. I don't think that there, there's at least no reports out there that Nightingale was fired from this position with Flint or anything. I just think it was probably uh, probably just the opportunity to go and coach at the professional level after a couple of years playing with uh, youth levels. Probably that opportunity when when it came calling, Jared Nightingale was like, uh, sorry, Flint, I'm going to get on out of here and go to Rockford, which I think uh, a lot of people in that situation would have made the same exact decision. So another promotion here for Jared Nightingale, someone that's been moving his way through the ranks in hockey in the past couple of years. Uh, and I'm certainly excited to kind of get to know him a little bit more, get to know his personality and what he's going to try to come in and do and just overall see, I'm excited to see what he can provide for this uh, young and youthful Ice Hogs roster going forward. All right, that wraps up Jared Nightingale being the latest addition to the Rockford Ice Hogs coaching staff this morning. Coming up in just a minute, I am going to discuss all the latest news out of Blackhawks practice on Tuesday ahead of the team flying to Seattle for their upcoming game. But first, I need to talk to you all about betonline.ag, your online sportsbook experts, and be sure to use our promo code LOCKDOWN, one word in all caps, to receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. NFL and college football are both starting to close in on the postseason. The UFC has some incredible fights coming up this weekend once again. If you took Max Holloway last weekend like I told you to, you're welcome for the money. And also, the NBA and the NHL both are in the middle of getting up and running. So for any sports that you want to gamble on, you can get all the latest news, odds, and info with Bet Online. They have real-time updated odds and props on almost anything you can imagine. It's the best way to place your bets, and it's also free to sign up. So don't sit on the sidelines anymore. Head on over to the website, or you can also use your mobile device to sign up today, and be sure to use our exclusive promo code, LOCKDOWN, that's one word in all caps, to receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. 
All right, we're back here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast. Moving on now into segment three, before I let you all go and enjoy the rest of your days, I also wanted to be sure to talk about everything noteworthy out of Blackhawks practice this morning before the team heads out west for their upcoming four-game road trip. First, Caleb Jones once again was a full participant this morning in practice. He took part in all the drills, and most importantly, didn't seem to be hindered or held back at all either by the coaching staff. And honestly, in my opinion, I really think that Caleb could suit up for the Blackhawks tomorrow if need be. Now, uh, I doubt that will be the case because I know Derek King uh, kind of wanted to give him some more action. And I think they also want to put him through pregame warmups one more time as well. Uh, I guess there is the possibility that, you know, if he looks good during practice tomorrow and also during the pregame skate ahead of the game versus the Seattle Kraken, maybe um, the Blackhawks decide to let him play. I, I personally doubt that happens. But from what I saw this morning out of Caleb Jones, I, I do think he's pretty darn close to being back and fully ready for game action. So uh, if not Wednesday against the Kraken tomorrow, I, I do think he'll be in there come Saturday night against his former team in the Edmonton Oilers, a game that he, uh, Caleb himself talked to the Blackhawks media about and said that's one that he really would like to be back for. Uh, if not, Obviously, Eric Gustafson is going to continue to serve as the sixth defenseman for the Blackhawks, as he's been forced to do uh, for most of the regular season so far. And Wyatt Kalanuk still has not been recalled from the Rockford Icehogs. So that just kind of uh, makes it seem right now that there's not any hurry or anything uh, for him to come up and be that seventh defenseman. It, it honestly seems like uh, the Hawks are just kind of okay with going forward with Eric Gustafson as a seventh defenseman, which is still, you know, I know a lot of people, including myself, don't want Eric Gustafson around any longer, but at the same time, I'd probably rather have Cal not getting some major top pairing minutes down in the Ice Hogs rather than playing every other game and bouncing in and out of the lineup with Caleb Jones. As for the Hawks forward group, once again this morning, um, Tyler Johnson was not on the ice for practice. He still apparently is dealing with that neck injury right now. And King said this morning that Johnson is once again going to get reevaluated here uh, before the team heads out west. I think they actually might be in the air already. Um, so at this point, without really any positive update on Johnson and considering that the way things have gone since he was removed from COVID protocol. I mean, he hasn't even hit the ice one time for practice. And I know the Hawks are, are going to be on the road for a full seven days here, but I just personally don't think that Johnson uh, without any reps, not a single rep in practice since uh, he got injured on, I think it was October 29th against Carolina. Uh, without him returning at this point, I just don't think he's going to be able to be fully ramped up back to 100% by next Tuesday versus the Calgary Flames, which is the fourth and final game of this upcoming road trip. So honestly, I just do kind of feel like uh, the Blackhawks are potentially going to leave Tyler Johnson behind. And also considering that Brandon Hagel returned to practice this morning, albeit in a white non-contact sweater, the team has announced that Brandon Hagel is going to travel with them, and that would give the Blackhawks 14 forwards on the road trip. So that just kind of might be enough, in my opinion, for the team to leave Tyler Johnson behind uh, until the club returns home from their road trip for Thanksgiving. As for the forward lines and everything, um, they were basically, not basically, they were the exact same that they were in yesterday's session. Uh, Debrinkit, Doc, and Kane up top. Kubalik, Jonathan Taze, and Jujar Kara as the second line. The third line was Mike Hardman, Dylan Strom, and Henrik Borgstrom, while the fourth line was Philip Kurashev, uh, Ryan Carpenter, and Reese Johnson. And once again, Adam Gaudet served as the 13th forward. And not only was he the 13th forward, but uh, this is one thing I noticed at practice this morning. When Derek King put out his forward lines as part of a drill, Gaudet never 
saw the ice once. So not only is he the 13th forward, but I think he's kind of far and beyond everyone else at this point. If I had to guess, I don't think there's any way that he's going to be in the lineup tomorrow against the Seattle Kraken, which uh, it's just frustrating. Um, With the lack of offense that this team has shown through 15 games so far, I just don't see how we can keep an offensively gifted guy like Gaudette regularly out of the lineup. I mean, it just doesn't make sense to me. And I know people in particular are upset with Reese Johnson getting opportunities over him. But for me, it's not just one guy getting in there over Gaudette. Like it's not Borgstrom getting dressed over Gaudette or Reese Johnson getting dressed over Gaudette. I, I think more so to me, it's about the five players that I mentioned on yesterday's episode who really haven't done anything at all for this team offensively. Mike Hardman has one assist. Philip Kurashev has yet to score a goal and only has three apples in his 14 games played. Ryan Carpenter has just one assist. Jujar Kara has one point, and that was a goal a couple games ago against the Penguins. And Reese Johnson doesn't have a point either. So in my opinion, it's not one guy getting the look over Adam Gaudette. It's all five of those players being in the lineup. Five of those guys, I think they have, if you take out, they they have what, six points between the five of them and three of them are from Philip Kurashev. Like that doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and, And another thing I wanted to talk about, people are kind of, some people are kind of irritated with, uh, Jujar Kara getting, the looks on the second line rather than an offensively minded player like Adam Gaudette, that personally uh, for me hasn't really been bothersome. And I know that Kara in a top six role might not be the best thing overall for this team, but I will say that I thought in the couple games that he's been placed with Tazen Kubelik, I honestly thought he's looked fine in that spot offensively. I I think that trio has created their chances. They just, haven't been able to find the back of the net so far consistently. And also Kara is one of the more reliable two way forwards on this team right now. So I think that also kind of gives Jonathan Taze a little bit more leeway on the offensive side of things where rather than him having to like focus in on defense and make sure that he's always that strong presence at the center position on the back check. So I think that's part of the reason why Kara's up there with that line. And it also kind of just makes them a shutdown second second line while they also can, can do some things offensively. Uh, I will say, though, that if things go south in the next couple of games, I think moving Kara off the second line will be one of the first changes that Derek King makes. But as for right now, for the Blackhawks, if it ain't broke... Don't fix it. Like this, this Blackhawks team is finally winning games right now. It's three in a row. And while it may not be in the most uh, fun and confident of manners in the way they're picking up their victories, a win's a win at this point. And uh, uh, again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I think that's kind of the mentality that's going around this Blackhawks team. And I think that's why Jujar Kara has remained on that second line, as well as maybe why Adam Gaudette continues to have such a such a minimal, minimal role for this Blackhawks team. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think that will wrap up Tuesday, November 16th episode of Locked On Blackhawks. Thank you again for tuning into the show, and be sure to go and follow the Locked On Blackhawks podcast for free right now on your favorite podcast app, and you'll be able to get the latest episode as soon as it comes out each day. And if you're not watching the video already, go check out the video version of this episode and go and subscribe to the Locked On Blackhawks YouTube page. And after the show, also go and check out the Locked On Bets podcast. I know you like money out there, and if you want more of it, then go check out Locked On Bets. It's hosted by your boy Q and handicapping expert Lee Sterling, and you can get daily picks, blowout specials, wrong team favored picks, and Lee Sterling's Lock of the Day by simply following the Locked On Bets podcast. It's free and available on all platforms. So be sure to check out Lockdown Bets right now, wherever you get your podcasts. Once again, thank you for tuning into today's episode. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. 
You can find me out on Twitter at my personal account at Jack Bushman two, or you could also check out my strictly Blackhawks account at talk and hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And for any questions at all regarding anything related to the show, feel free to email lockdownblackhawks at gmail.com. You can also hit me on one of my Twitter accounts, or you can call 708-653-0572 to leave a voicemail. So until tomorrow's episode, thanks again for listening to the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.